Hi, I'm Sug. And I'm Dan. And this is the Demystified Zone. More refreshing than Pakasti. Hey, what's up, Dan? Hey. How goes it today? It's going, it's going well. You know, we've got a nice color palette going on today. Yeah. We're yeah. matchers. We got the red. We got the red. Red and we're doing the DPRK, kind yeah, of. Kind, well, I mean, kind maybe of. more China. Yeah. Yellow skin, red flag. Maybe <laughs> Chicago Bulls. Maybe got a, got a little black and red. That would be yeah. more appropriate, I guess, <laughs> considering our locale. Yeah, exactly. You're looking really good today, Dan. I want to say that. <laughs> you know, my hair is it is at a very good place. I I my hair drives me crazy. I know and you can't see this, listener, but. <laughs> Uh, let me just describe what I see today. <laughs> this young Asian man with peppery, mm. salt and pepper hair. Mm. Is this the, you've got good hair. I got to say, you're not a lot of Korean men have great hair. You know, we got to do a lot of things. Yeah. We have stiff, straight, you know, co fro hair. Yeah. That doesn't behave. Jay, for example, has, I've never seen his hair. He's always wearing a hat. <laughs> In fact, today he's wearing a full firefighter's uniform with helmet and everything. <laughs> you guys won't Can't be able to prove me wrong, but it, trust me, he just came off shift. Yeah, just fought a fire. And but he is right a dem- he is the perfect demonstration of Korean man with bad hair. <laughs> I could take my hat off if you want. No, leave it on, please. <laughs> We're both wearing hats. Yeah, I'm with you, Jay. I'm with you on that because I also am wearing my hat. But Dan, flowing free today. <laughs> my hair drives me crazy. There's don't no say one that. Who could don't say me. that. We There's don't have no hope. One. If your hair is driving you crazy, oh we have gosh, no hope. Dude, my hair sucks. Anyway, yeah. Well, it looks it looks it looks good br- today. It's brilliant I do, today. I do affirm that. It's inspiring me today. <laughs> That's what's happening there. So, uh, well, we welcome back Jay. Jay's been out for a little bit, guys. Yeah. Jay, you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you. We noticed that you drove in in a different vehicle today. Yeah. I, I sold. You, yes. Yeah, I sold one of my cars. One of his cars, y'all. Yeah. One of many. Single uh, single man to married with no kids, you know, making making a transition here, man, you know. You know, he's not blessed in hair, but he's blessed in other things. Yeah. <laughs> he has Jay multiple ha- no, cars. No, Jay has had the coolest cars, man. The coolest car. What's the coolest car you've owned, Jay? Oh, it's probably a toss up between the last car. And your minivan? No, not my minivan. <laughs> <laughs> the last car, which was a Mercedes sports car. And mm-hmm. then uh, I had a 1997 Nissan 240SX. Mm. What the heck is that thing? I don't even know. Is this. This is Fast and Furious we're talking about? Kind of, yeah. Oh, it's my a, gosh. It's a rear-wheel drive. Oh, is this a drift Dom car? Toretto car or no, no, the no. Paul Walker car? It's a Tokyo Drift car. Tokyo Drift car. Even better. Okay, yeah. Here he's pulling up an image. Oh, my gosh. Look at that thing. Yeah, pretty sweet. It looks like Rad Racer. You guys remember Rad Racer? No. It's a Nintendo game. Okay, forget <laughs> it. Forget it. Anyway, enough about Jay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk. Running away. Yes. Do you ever run away as a kid, Dan? Ooh. Or at least have a plan. Did you ever like yeah, formulate? Yeah, I ran away. You did. I ran away to under my bed. That's, no, that's come on. That's the extent of it. No, that's I'm, as yeah. far as you got, your bed. Yeah. Did you even come up? With, but did you ever like, you know, yeah, dream? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was your plan? <laughs> what were you going to, what was your genius plan to get away? It was like we lived next to uh, the woods. I would like stay in the woods, live off the land for a little <laughs> Just bit. Just a hundred feet from your house, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they'll never find me here. Okay, woods. Step one: go to the woods. Yeah, go to the woods. Did you have like Listen. a? Would you have like a bag hidden in the woods, like a go bag? No, no, no. I didn't. I never took it that far. No, I just just fantasized about running into the woods. <laughs> and then, I, I I never like. Um, That's as far as you got. Yeah, the I, woods. <laughs> Yeah, I never like uh I never, you know, entertained the idea of going for a long time. I entertained the idea of scaring my parents. Like, oh, yeah, I'll, false threats. Yeah. I'll I'll show them sort of thing. But yeah. did you ever like tell them that it was going to happen? Like no, I'm going to run away. I did I did once say, "You don't love me." 
And my dad's like, come on. Did you say in Korean or English? In English. <laughs> How do you say I'm going to run away in Korean? <laughs> Jay? <laughs> right. Other than you being strictly um, disciplined after that. <laughs> No, they just laughed. So me. yours was just a threat. Yeah. You never actually even, formulated yeah. plans. Yeah. Hmm. What about you? Uh, yeah, I had really well thought out plans. <laughs> I knew exactly what jobs I was going to look for. <laughs> I was going to go south because I figured wow. southern. I don't know why. Why did I say think south? I, for some reason, I always wanted to go like through Texas. And I just felt like there are more jobs out there. So yeah. I was very concerned about jobs. Wow. This is a very immigrant thing, mindset. As a young person, we worked at very young ages. Yes, we did. Uh, my, you know, that was our chore, right? Working mm. at the store. Yeah. So I always thought like, well, we owned a jewelry store. So I thought, oh, jewelry sells really good in the South. Oh, you know, my parents were in the South for a little bit too in Miami. So like, I was like, oh, I could do that. I remember that. I remember mm. that life. I could do that again. It was just about the job. Most of my planning was about a job. <laughs> really? Wow. And that's then, very practical. And then on top of it, I would always plan kind of, I would, this was like more like homeless planning <laughs> versus running away. Like if I was ever homeless. Yeah. About, I had this, <laughs> I'm just remembering this now. That's why I'm laughing. I thought I need to take my suit with me. Wow. If I take my suit with me, people will think I'm not homeless. <laughs> <laughs> And if I ask for something for free, they'll give it to me. <laughs> I thought about that. Wow. And, and double, double role. If I needed a job, they would give me. And this is when I was like, I don't even know what suit yeah, jobs are. Yeah, how old are. were you? Were I don't you? know, like junior high. Oh, okay. Like 12, 13, somewhere around there, 14 maybe. <laughs> Isn't that the age when you start thinking about running away when you're a teen? Like pre-teen teen? Mm, I thought about it earlier than that. Like in elementary school. Oh, you had a hard life, huh? <laughs> no. <I didn't. laughs> my Those really siblings nice were real me. hard. Your, your sister was real I, hard my on you. Was, my sister was. Bad. I had two older brothers. I didn't think about running away until way later. <laughs> <laughs> I probably thought about it beforehand too, but they, they weren't good plans. It was just like ride, yeah. my, ride my bike around the block. <laughs> I always thought someone, would, my my dad would catch me very quickly. That's why I thought about like. I need to make sure I get far quick as quick as possible. <laughs> Jay, Jay, did you ever run away or think about or plan about running away? I think I've always thought about it, mm. like, but uh, actually doing it, no, probably no. Yeah. I mean, I did go to the military when I was seventeen, so I guess that's. <laughs> did you run away? Were you, maybe, run, were you running from something? Maybe I was running from something. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you now you're back. You made it back. Yeah. Congratulations. You got him back, guys. Well, today we're going to talk about running away mm -hmm. from North Korea. And you hear us, well, we haven't really talked explicitly about defecting. We had an episode uh, previously uh, with um, Mingyang about the diaspora and people leaving North Korea, yeah. refugees where they end up. Obviously, Dan lives, works, breathes this subject matter. Mm -hmm. So for once... We have a subject matter <laughs> expert. <laughs> this is the only time you can listen to this podcast and be like, okay. They, this guy knows what he's talking about. They, they, they may know what they're talking about. <laughs> it's a good chance yeah. they might be right here. <laughs> Dan, tell us just okay. very briefly what you do so that the listeners have some context. Ooh. Briefly, yeah, briefly. I, uh, I work for Crossing Borders, who sponsors this podcast. Uh, we help North Korean refugees after they escape. Shout out to CB. Yeah. And where are these refugees going or where are you helping them get to? So they first get into China, where we have help for them there. If, we are fort if we're fortunate enough to meet them. And then in South Korea, if they make it out of China which is difficult. So it's like this weird loop of leaving your country to get back into your country. Yeah, very close. Hmm. You know, I never thought about that. Yeah, you, I think it's the, the total journey is like, like 10,000, 20,000 miles, and then you end up like 50 miles away from your country. It's Korea. like if we escaped Chicago and came yeah. back in Detroit. <laughs> 
Yeah. Or other way around. Detroit's probably worse off. So they're going to go <laughs> leave yeah. into Canada and come back into Chicago. Via South America. Yeah. Via, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, so I thought we'd talk about this. Again, we have a subject matter expert with us today and always. So why not? And I came across this article. This was kind of triggered this whole thing for me was that, and you can find this on the Crossing Borders blog. There's, there was this recent article about how there are brokers taking advantage of desperate defectors. And, you know, you hear about these stories, or at least I've heard of these stories, even for immigrants from South America to America, about how there's so much um, just very bad people out there taking advantage of those who are just trying to escape or make a better life here in America or whatever the reason. And obviously this is rampant all throughout the world, but yeah. especially here in North Korea. And then we were always talking about how, again, the minders, mm-hmm. big brother always and big sister and uncle, everyone literally watching your shoulder or watching, watching you. Watching you're looking, every move. Yeah. Looking over your shoulder to in the North Korean society. And it just got me thinking like how, and we've heard stories. I've heard many stories of these very bold and and daring uh, escapes out of North Korea. But how does one do this? How do you do this? You, you are in a country that is already limited with information, limited with all these resources. Everything is limited essentially. Yeah. And now you're trying to get out. And into a, a world you've never seen or been in or even had exposure to uh, through media or other means. So with us today is Dan Chung, <laughs> and we will be doing the How to Defect from North Korea, Step by Step by Dan Chung. Yeah. The official. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, North Korea is not listening right now, All so right. they don't know our secrets. Yeah. But we can, or the right North Koreans are listening. Mm. They can get some tips. Tips, yeah. From someone on the outside. Yeah. If if they're connected to Spotify or Apple Podcasts, they can download <laughs> this. If they look for the number twenty North Korean podcast <laughs> and they happen to Google search that, they will get it. They'll they'll find they're it. They're gonna get a gold nugget right yeah. here. Yeah. Take it so out. So Dan. Okay. Start us off. What are Dan's steps to defect? Yep. Okay. So the okay, the first thing is like not even you haven't even left yet there's a couple things that need to happen or help your chances even before you leave like prerequisites yeah prerequisites yeah. before running away okay okay first is is uh be a woman <laughs> <laughs> that's if you're a woman you have much more likelihood to be able to successfully leave your country of north korea so if you're a man in North Korea, let's say you work at a, a mine, you're, you're mining coal, but you haven't had the electricity or gasoline to run the equipment to do the mining job. Well, you're out of luck. You still have to show up to work every day and they'll make you do very menial tasks. Uh, all the men are controlled by the government. They're watched. I, I guess the government thinks they're more important or more dangerous. I, I don't know um, the reasoning behind that. But if you're a man and you, you have a job, which most men do, uh, they have to show up to work. And if they don't, it's like Shawshank Redemption when you know they're doing that final roll call and Andy Dufresne does not come on <laughs> his cell. Well, that is exactly what happens if a man, a North Korean man, does not show up to work. It's like alarms are raised. There is, so uh, North Korea is a communist or based on communist values. Mm-hmm. I don't know if, I guess, you, can you call them a communist? Uh, what do they model their, yeah. democ- their, their governance by communism? Probably closest. So, yeah. but, you know, under a, a state like that, um, do the women get assigned jobs? I mean, they have jobs too, obviously. Some women have official jobs, but... This is uh, so. This has played out also in um, the free market system now. That you know, since the famine, North Korea has allowed 
free market activity, like, you know, farmer's markets, basically. But all of the people running those stands are women because they're not official positions. Mm. And those are now the only money making enterprises in the country. So, yeah. So, so the women are like getting way ahead of the men. Not necessarily a, a prerequisite, but an advantage. Oh, a huge, huge advantage. advantage. If you were a woman, if you're thinking about defecting and you're a woman, you got a huge advantage yes. over being a dude. Okay. Okay. What's sec- that? What else? Second thing that would really help you before you even think about leaving is get someone to bankroll you. Okay. Financing. Finance. A financier. Finance. A financier. It, yeah. You want, because the journey is dangerous. You need someone to help you uh, get across the border and then get through China and then get through Southeast Asia. How much money you need? Roughly. <sighs> Oh, thousand, tens of thousands of dollars. U.S.? The equivalent to tens of thousands like of U.S. dollars. 20 grand. You need at least 20 grand? Yeah, I think so. Wow. Yeah. I mean, how much does a North Korean make? So that's the, that's the thing, right? At first, uh, North Koreans, you know, when they get to South Korea, they get that lump sum of money. It's about 20,000 U.S. dollars. So okay. At, from the jump, a lot of these people will pay back either their financiers or their brokers for the journey so that you're really starting at zero. So the, it's yeah. it's on credit and it's almost more yeah. a risk investment by the brokers to right. get somebody out, which actually could create some very toxic relationships and there we'll go or through that motivations, scene, yeah. right? Okay. Well, you got to have a bankroll. What, what about a, so a bankroll, what does that look like for most uh, defectors? Is that um, you have, random you have, strangers yeah, or do people pool Korea. money locally maybe to get somebody out or does... Mm, no. No? You, okay. You, you have to talk to a family in South Korea. That's usually how it works these days. Yeah. But how do you talk to someone in South Korea if you're not allowed to talk to the outside? Well, you, you're not allowed to talk to people from the outside. So people are sending remittances. I explained to you what that means. From Explain South it again. Explain R- what that remittance, is. A remittance is like, let's say, a North Korean makes it to South Korea and they are making money. There is a way to send money back into North Korea, and that's called a remittance. So okay. anyway, through these remittances... There's, they'll send these messages, right? Like these couple sentence messages. Like, hmm. hey, it's kind of like we were talking about the collect call and how <laughs> it's, they said, hey, record your name at the beep. Mom, I'm at the library. It's like you, you pack in a very short message rife with meaning that, hey, I can get you out. Like are they writing letters on like the... Korean dollar bill. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't and know. Like exactly. Messages no, no, on no. the money itself. I don't know exactly. <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know how, how they're writing the messages. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So uh, get some financing. Yeah. Get some you need financing. an ambassador of Quan on there. <laughs> exactly. Or right, what else do we need? Do we have yes. other prerequisites before we even think about doing this? It really helps if you don't tell anyone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because that would make sense, though. That's why you can't pool money for somebody exactly got it right yeah so if anyone knows it could incriminate them right so if you love and care for someone you probably wouldn't tell them that you're leaving and you're leaving them behind too (laughs) that's the other thing (laughs) or you might get a hey can i come along too (laughs) it's Uh, like hey friend meet me here i have something really important (laughs) to tell you and they're like wait you're taking me with you right (laughs) no i just wanted to tell you (laughs) why would you do that to me Uh, sorry (laughs) Yeah, so you don't want to incriminate a friend or loved one. Um, you and you also don't want anyone to like get you in trouble. Too, yeah, people so. goss. Yeah, they're just gonna be talking that up. I mean, did North you hear Cor- about Dan? Yeah. He, he's he's getting out of here. North Korea is a like they f- uh, formed a society around ratting each other out. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We've talked about. They've that. incentivized that. So. That's the whole note-taking system on each other for exactly. for your for your betterment of Songbun. Yeah. Okay. So all right, we, we got uh, preferences. Better to be a woman, or the higher chances if you're a woman. Uh, get yourself a bankroll. Um, don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. What else? We haven't even left yet. We haven't stepped foot <laughs> out the door. We're still in our home <laughs> thinking about this, and we yeah. got a lot of a long list of things to do. 
I would say, um, you know, I don't know. You have to be somewhat in shape too, as you'll see oh. later. Well, I mean, what, what, what kind of shape are we talking about? Like, well, just not sickly. Like your health has to be good. Are you talking about like, we got to be well, like CrossFit shape? Later. Yeah. We'll, we'll okay. Later. Okay. All right. Oh, wow. We got some <laughs> uh, foreshadowing here. All right, so yeah. any other prerequisites before we actually get to... No, that, I think that's all right. the major one. Let's talk about uh, John Kim. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's got... I'm sorry, uh, Joanna Kim. Mm-hmm. Joanna, yeah. She has uh, a bankroll, someone in South Korea. She mm-hmm. hasn't told anybody. Yeah. She doesn't have a job she's got to report to. Mm-hmm. She's ready to go. What's, yeah. What do we do now? So you have a broker... Um, so the bankroll is to hire a broker, right? It's a very risky proposition, as we said. Okay. So with your broker, the brokers, a lot of them are able to come in and out of North Korea for commerce. Um, Who are these brokers? Are these North Koreans, Chinese, uh, South Koreans? Yeah, mostly ethnically Korean Chinese people. Chosun joke is there. Ah, North Korean Chinese? Yeah, some. Okay. Yeah. They're referred to as Hwagyo. I don't know exactly what that means. But That's like the broker? The, the people who are, no, the Chinese Koreans who are oh, I'm coming sorry. in and out. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, are these, is there a Yellow Pages ad for these guys? Or like, no, you're probably you, receiving you, money from them. It's all related. Uh, mm-hmm. They're already maybe supplying yeah. your town. With, they're the town hookup. With, DVD, yeah, with DVDs, DVDs and or, K-pop. Yeah, they're like Red in Shawshank Redemption. Got right? it. <laughs> guy who, can, who knows how to get things. Guy who knows how to get things. <laughs> got it. Okay, so you got uh, these brokers. Yeah. You probably have had, con- so you just have to have like a conversation and be like, like a silent conversation. Yeah, like, yeah. very careful I, conversation. I'm looking for laundry, <laughs> yes. Chinese laundry, <laughs> if you get my drift. Yes, I do understand that you need Chinese laundry. I would love some cigarettes from <laughs> South Korea. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, do you know, like, what are those conversations? Like, are, well, let me ask this first. Does the. Will Joanna need to be making those conversations or does their bankroll or like connections in South Korea or China do that for them? Or is it both mutual? Like they got to have this sit down conversation with a broker and be like, hey, I want to get out of here. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I imagine that most of the planning is done outside of North Korea. Okay. And and it's, again, through the this network of family or whoever yeah. that is saying, I want to get this person out. I want to get Joanna out of there. Yeah. So, for example, um, you know, in China, when people want to leave China, so they have already left North Korea on their own. And most of these women, in my experience, have been sold, right? So they're in China. They're kind of stuck in this marriage that they don't want to be in. If they want to leave, it's at the drop of a hat. You have to be ready because... Wait, China or North Korea? In China. Okay. But it's, it's the same system, I'm got saying. It, got it. Okay, got it. Because you have... These brokers have to have a group of women that are ready to go to make it profitable for them. Got it. To, you know... Make it worthwhile. Make it worthwhile. It's always in groups. So when the group mm. is ready to, to form and go, they'll call you and you got to be able to leave at the drop of a hat. And I imagine it's very similar for the North Korean side too. Okay. All right. So what's the next step? You get the call. Yeah. What, where, where are you going? Where are we meeting? We're meeting at the border. So you have to arrange a, um, meetup point with this broker, this time and place, because as we all know, or as most of us know, uh, North Korea, the North Korea, China border is, uh, militarized, and uh, double barbed wire fences, landmines even. I've, I have seen with my own eyes like little um, concrete structures where, with holes for guns. What is, it? is that called a turret? No, it's not called a turret. What do you call it? Jay, what it's is It's like it? a bunker. It's a bunker, right? Gun hole. Yeah, it's a bunker. <laughs> yeah, a bunker. Sorry. I not like a, my word better. Turret. Gun hole. <laughs> What's a turret? Well, it, it's a it's a turret is what a like a machine gun is mounted on. Oh, okay. okay. So See? it could See, technically I was right be too. both. Uh, gun hole was right too. <laughs> gun yeah, hole. Gun hole. <laughs> all right, we got it. There's a bunch of gun holes on the yeah, border. Yeah, the, yeah. There's all kinds of surveillance. So you have to the 
this is where the broker's expertise comes in. They have to know who to bribe along the border so that everyone else is turning a blind eye. A lot of the crossings happen in the winter because the river that separates North Korea and China freezes over. Uh, let's let's, let's talk about geography. Hold on. Swim. Yeah, I yeah. get I love the picture you paint. Let's talk about geography. So Jay's yeah. got a map up. Listener, if you're listening, pull up Google Maps. Put in North Korea. You will see on the north side border along China. Uh, I got this from the internet. It said it's about their border with China and a little bit of Russia there at the end there. And then yeah. far northeast is 840 miles long, roughly. Yeah. Which is great. I mean, that's a big border. It's a big border. Uh, where is it any spot on that border they're jumping out? Or like I see two prov- Chinese provinces, yeah, maybe three there. But what is that? Uh, Liaoning and Jilin. Yeah. Jilin. Jilin covers most of it. Mm -hmm. That's the one that I'm most familiar with. And I don't know where they're crossing these days, but for the most part, uh, on the north end of the border, like the tip that kind of goes up before you hit Russia, that's where a lot of crossings happen. Really? And that's because at that point, it's pretty cold there. So the river freezes much earlier there than in the south. I see. It says literally we need a natural bridge to cross. So this, and that yeah. is way further north on this map than mm-hmm. let's say by the Yellow Sea right there. Yeah. Which is and, pretty, that, so yeah. and it's very warm. Mark Pyongyang right on that map, Jay. It's like just over the border. Down. Little yeah, lab, yeah, right there. Down, yeah. That's a far. I mean, you're traveling the entire North Korean country too. If just you're to get escaping to a, from Pyongyang, most of the people are that's escaping true. from that's the true. northern regions. I get that's true. If you're in the more rural areas, mm-hmm. you have a better chance. Again, less minders, less people out there, less yeah. jobs, especially for women. Yes, exactly. So, okay, that makes sense. But that's so far, like literally, and it's mountainous too. The terrain is mountainous. Yeah, so you got. It's like if we escaped out of Maine. To get to Texas. Yeah. <laughs> like it's like literally go all the way around to get down to Texas, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, fortunately, these uh, women are tiny. Like last year, <laughs> last year, sorry to, to digress here, but last year we filmed this woman, you know, it was like a day in the life of one of our refugees. Uh, we made a video of her. Her name's Kelly. We call her Kelly. Anyway, she's like, I don't know, 90 pounds. And so every day she crosses like this mountain path to get to work from Elm House, our safe house there. And I was called to like hold the camera. I was like, we had to cut all the audio out because I was like, <laughs> and she like did not break a sweat. Yeah. Well, she made that journey. Yeah. And it you're was not like, in great shape. <laughs> When they might say when more about climbing, you than when her. When you're climbing <laughs> elevation, weight really matters. Understand, but I think that story says more about you <laughs> than Kelly. I would never no, be able no to make this to Kelly. journey. Yes, Kelly was just, uh, yeah, she was in shape. All right, you get the call. You got to get to this uh, border rendezvous spot that's yeah. been, I'm sure they just kind of like tell you, like, meet me here. At this time, yeah. That's how the, okay, <laughs> sorry, this is like weird, but... I'm sure they know their terrain, but if you're traveling, like if you're in the middle of North Korea, even not in Pyongyang, mm. and you're going up to that point where the river froze over, mm-hmm. how well do you know that? Air, like they don't got Google Maps. How do they know where they're <laughs> going? Like how do they know where to meet but or like how to? That's a great question. I have no idea. That is not That is that's incredible. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. There's not even they Ask get- Jeeves or <laughs> MapQuest. MapQuest. Not even gas station map. <laughs> you know, like you can't yeah. go to a gas station and get a local map. You got to have it. Uh, I imagine there's. Well, I guess they do have local map. maps. Yeah. I mean, they're not that antiquated, but they have maps. But yeah. if you just don't know the area, though, and be very this difficult. broker sent you a two word message saying, meet me here. Yeah. That I can imagine that's very challenging. I'm, I'm sure. I wonder. I would love to know if how many people miss the meeting. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would definitely miss it. Yeah, I can't even make it to <laughs> this podcast on time, apparently. <laughs> and I know where it is. Jay yeah. would be would be sunk out of luck. He <laughs> never shows up half the time. <laughs> Just kidding, Jay. I love you. <laughs> All right. You yeah. make it. Let's say you make it. You make it to the rendezvous. What's yeah. next? 
you gotta cross the border well you, and then there's like <laughs> and that's the other thing. if you're ma- meaning that you're probably seeing like a bunch of other people that just are showing Perhaps, up at the same yeah. time and you don't know who's when. a spy and who's yeah Oof. yeah it's it is a precarious situation so and there's military all along right and i'm sure they're moving in and out of their posts i mean there's a lot to to deal with yeah yeah, yeah. oh man Okay, we made it. Uh, so let's say Joanna makes it. She She's cr- there. She crosses the border. She sees uh, what what what's the word again? The Hawaii, the the Chinese. The just we'll call them brokers. Yeah, Hawaii, broker. Yeah. Okay, we'll call them we'll call them broke. <laughs> the broke gets there, and yeah. we're running now, or we're getting across. You're getting across. So he's bribed everybody. Yeah, hopefully, and hopefully his plan is solid. You're just totally one hundred percent trusting this person. But he's got to do the hike too, though. Right, like he's hiking no, he, in. He's no, no. He's meeting you on the China side. Oh my time. God! So yeah. you just, okay, that's even worse than on the yeah, map you're, thing. You're like by, you're you're, you're now crossing into China. Yeah, and you have no idea where you are, and you and you're putting this blind faith in this person. Oh my gosh! How do they know where to go? <laughs> I don't know. How do they know where to go? Yeah, it's crazy. I, bet, I mean, I'm sure there's cities like small towns and cities, and they I'm sure they can ask. But that's just wow, <laughs> wow. Do you really want to ask though? Like raise any suspicion. That's true. Like yeah. you have so much risk. Yeah. In North Korea, you have to have permission to even go to the next town over. So this is where my childhood strategy of having a suit <laughs> on you comes to play. You come with a suit on, you say, or hanbok maybe. In that case, you're like, hey, I'm lost right now. <laughs> where is so-and-so city? <laughs> Do you mind giving me directions? Oh, my I gosh. They don't ask too many questions. Yeah. All right. You cross the border. Okay. Mm. Now you're in China. Yes. The first thing you have to do, actually, is you have to change. Because the clothes in North Korea are different from the clothes in China. Okay. It's more, um, it's a poorer country. So yeah, yeah. If you dress like you do in uh, North Korea, uh, then you'll stick out. Yeah, so okay. So you have to change. Got to blend in. Yeah. So does the broker have clothes waiting? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. So that's part of your fee. Your fee is going <laughs> to a new outfit. A new outfit. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you have to change and then you have to start your journey. Uh, and this is where it really helps now because before, like when Crossing Borders first started in 2003, they didn't have the broker phase when you were in North Korea. You had to cross over into China and look for someone to help you escape. And most of these women oh my gosh. end up getting sold. Right? Yeah. So this is the advantage. Like the average wait time for a broker in China was like years and years and years because you get into all these problems. But now it's like, you no, know, your wait time in China is like days because mm. once you hit the ground in China and get changed, you're on the run. Interesting. So it's like the... It, it's almost like the business has a business has sprung up about this. Yeah. Obviously, there's money, twenty grand mm-hmm. potentially. Yeah. In doing this, so uh, you know, as ugly as that sounds, twenty thousand per head. Maybe has had, maybe is a, a a good thing that that's developed some in that sense of like creating opportunity for people to get out and not being sold in slavery or were sent back to North Korea, right? And I don't know yeah. what's worth it, actually. I don't, yeah, it's, both a, are, it's, it's such both a... both per- terrible options. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, let's say you, you connect with a good broker. Mm-hmm. Well, what are we doing now? Are we staying in China? Like, how long do we stay in China? Do we go directly, a flight straight to South Korea? What, so how does at that this work? point, you're probably going to a group of people, right? You're rendezvousing, you know, it's a rally point, basically, of your group is meeting at this and this and such and such city at such and such time an apartment is arranged for all of you you're probably uh, meeting each other maybe spending one night in that city near the border uh, and then you're off to the races all right what's what's the races like where where are we going yeah we're going to southeast asia right so um before before that though It used to be Mongolia, right? Okay. So the northern route through Mongolia... I see, yeah. ...used to be a viable option. It's no longer... If you watch the movie, it's called Crossing. Um, 
it's a really great mo- South Korean movie about this very journey, right? And mm. their trip was through Mongolia. But if you look at the map, if you look at any map, you could see Mongolia is mostly desert. And it is a just... It's Mongolia called, is massive. I didn't yeah. realize how huge Mongolia is, <laughs> but it's huge. It's really big, and most of it is the Gobi Desert. Wow. So, And Mongolia, uh, around 2009, I believe stopped accepting North Korean refugees. So it's mm. all Southeast Asia now. Okay. So Mongolia, the road to Mongolia is no longer open. Yeah. So you're going down through, are you going through Beijing then? Like coming it just depends. It, yeah. It just depends on what the broker thinks is best at the time. Okay. So, yeah. all right. So you're working your way down through China. So now you're, you're basically in civilization. Now you're, you're no longer yeah. like, hoofing it on like mountain roads or like forests you're in, and you're desert. On buses cars vans okay things like that so where are you trying to get to like i mean obviously china is not safe and it's a huge country you got to yeah. get across um are you trying to get to like shandong and then like across the lc to south korea directly where do we go uh we're going to yeah we're going to, to different cities it's a different city for each group i hear uh, the, the route has to keep on changing. And so you're just making your way through China. I don't know the route, but you're trying to get near the Mang- uh, Myanmar and Laos border. Oh, okay. So we're going really southwest then, away from South Korea. Yes. Again, the goal here is to get to South Korea because yeah. <laughs> that's where the 20K is waiting for us to repay all these debts yeah. for us mm-hmm. because South Korea government um, will give this to refuge- North Korean refugees yeah. or defectors, I should say. But you're telling me they're going to go southwest away from Korea. You're going the opposite direction. Yeah. All right. Explain that to me. Okay. So China is friends with North Korea. They do not want, uh, North Korea does not want China to acknowledge them as people or give them any human rights. So it's very dangerous for a North Korean refugee in China. 70% of all North Korean refugees are women for the reasons that we stated earlier. 80% of all of those women have been sold in China oh my as forced brides. So um, you want to make your way out of China as soon as possible because there's no acknowledgement that you're even a person in China. Okay, literally. but we're going the longest route possible. Yeah. Though. So explain oh, yeah. so, that to yeah. me. So sorry, sorry, that's no. what you're getting at. So yeah, you're going to Thailand because Thailand is the closest country and most accessible. Even though it's not very accessible, it's the most accessible for these people to get to to actually receive. Uh, acknowledgement that you're a human being and you have human rights. So is the broker assisting in this entire... Tr- I'm assuming they yeah. are because they don't get the Taking money until you get to South Korea. The, the details, yeah. Wow. So that <laughs> that is quite the travel itinerary to get from yeah. the northeast corner of China, China down to the southeast country. corner, southwest corner to this Myanmar-Thailand border. Yeah. Holy wow. Yeah. Yeah, and on top of that, so in China, you you have no rights. And so, as I said, uh, and there's brokers that are nice and good, but there's brokers who are not good people. And we've, I haven't personally encountered these people, obviously, because I've never had to take this journey. But there are people who have told me that these brokers are scumbags. Mm. Some of these brokers are scumbags mm. and they will take advantage of the women, mostly women, right? During their time in China and they just have to go along with it, right? Even though uh, you're technically getting paid for these services, they know that these women are completely uh, at their mercy. So let's say they get a good broker. Yeah. When we're getting to Thailand, I'm, my assumption is if China is in, you know, agreement with North Korea or at least uh, helping North Korea, mm-hmm. they must have some kind of border protection or border screening for yeah. Thailand for mm-hmm. people leaving yes. China. So how, how are the defectors getting into Thailand? Yeah, so Thailand does not border 
China, unfortunately. Um, if you zoom in on your map there, Laos or Myanmar are the closest countries, and you have they're not friendly to North Koreans either. So you have to run through rugged terrain, uh, in rugged ter mountainous terrain, basically a hundred miles to Thailand. So this like You're running Yunnan an ultra province. Marathon. So this Yunnan province here, yeah. mm -hmm. they're just cutting straight through between Laos, Laos and, and Myanmar, Myanmar. Yeah. To, hit Thailand. to hit Thailand. That little cross. Could you mark that, Jay? Just so we can we'll see. We'll have these it. pictures posted. Yeah, you guys will be able to see what we're marking here. Wow. Yeah. Well, what about uh, Hanoi and like Vietnam? Are they are they not welcoming of defectors? It's still like a Vietnam. It's still like a uh, communist government. They still have ties to North Korea, although they are f friendlier to North Koreans than um, Laos has been. It's not, yeah, it's not good. It's not a good situation there. Okay. Either. Yeah. So the the last, <laughs> after all of this, after all the the stress of getting out of North Korea and then now traveling all of china the last leg or one of the final legs is a, it's ultra, an ultra marathon. marathon oh my gosh through well that answers terrain. the question of why the why kelly i mean <laughs> yeah. there's other reasons why kelly is more fit than you yeah. <laughs> but one of the reasons is that she had to do something similar to this yes yeah and i know this woman who had tuberculosis who made this run she's like what? almost died she said wow and uh, you know, unlike, you know, um, let's say if you're with your family or something, you're not with family. They will leave you behind if you can't keep up. They will leave you behind because it's a matter of survival, right? Mm. So if you can't cut it, then you get stuck and you might get caught and sent back to North Korea where you will be executed. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So... This is the most physically demanding of part of the journey, obviously. The, okay, last leg here is once you get to Thailand, is that just a flight back to South Korea then? Or a boat? What, what, yeah. What, how are they getting to South Korea they're, from here? They're taking a flight uh, from Thailand, but it takes a couple months to pro process your paperwork. Yeah. So you stay in Thailand for a few months? You t stay in Thailand. You know, the Korean embassy has places set up for North Korean refugees. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it is. So Thailand is really the, the only sense option. of freedom. Yeah. But you're free once you get set foot in Thailand. Yeah. Yeah, you are. Um, are there North Korean minders in Thailand looking for defectors? Are they on to this kind of route, this... <laughs> I haven't heard of that. No, I haven't heard of that. Hmm. I'm sure there are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Um, so I, I think I told this story before. One of the refugees that we've worked with in the past said that it wasn't until she got to South Korea where she really felt free. And yeah. she held her ID for the first time in her hand and realized, oh, yeah, I am a person. And she held that ID... Uh, all night and she cried that is incredible i mean you hear a lot of uh immigration stories mm -hmm. throughout the world right the middle east to europe yeah. south america to the u.s even middle east to the u.s from south america like that's an incredible journey in itself where you're, you're finding people um go through south america to come back into the u.s but like this is when it's a bizarre look at this map you're going from literally Seoul and Pyongyang are hundreds and hundreds of miles away from each other. Yeah. But you go in this crazy loop all around Asia to come back to Seoul. To come back to Seoul. A place that was... Like 50 miles away from your home country. Yeah, if you're leaving from Pyongyang, you know. Yeah. that That is an incredible journey. These people are tough, man. Wow. <laughs> That's all I got to say. And if you ever question the toughness of these people, like... They're incredibly gritty and tough. Well, this is a how-to I'm grateful I'll never have to use yeah. or or be uh, challenged with doing. Yeah. But it is an incredible how-to. And those who have accomplishment, accomplished this is are even more incredible. Yes. But this, 
I, I guess, you know, what's amazing to me in the sil- not silver lining, but something that I think about is, again, to your point about resi- human resilience, this trail is the most illogical, impractical trail to take <laughs> if I'm trying to run away from a point A to point B, right? Yeah. But obviously, um, I have the luxury to be ignorant. Right. But the fact that human beings have like made this work and made it happen, made it an economy around itself because North Koreans have the boldness and the bravery to do this, is, yeah. that is incredible to me. I agree. How many miles is that? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's a lot of miles logged. That's more miles than Jay's put on his cars. <laughs> That's for sure. Hey listeners, if you're enjoying the podcast or becoming more interested in North Korea, or maybe you're just feeling generous right now, please leave us a review and share it with your people. It'll help us to continue to grow this show and spread awareness about North Korean refugees and all that is going on over there. And it'll also help prove to my umma that my career choices were right. 